think we'll lose the Peter Salisbury, very valuable candidate. I'm going to uh, copy out Dar, this at least, and stand up because uh, I think I'm better without a microphone too. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here for this, uh, these hustings um, because, as Iris has said, uh, this is the second time round, uh, the second time we'll be electing a mayor. As I've said last time round, and I've said many times in between, electing a mayor is a democratic <coughs> way of deciding who is going to lead our city. But you can only lead if people follow. You'll only get re-elected if people think overall what you've done is a good thing. And of course, I'm coming in front of you now with a record of the last four years for you to make that judgment as to whether or not you want to give me another four years to do it. But I'm going to begin by actually agreeing with uh, something that Adrian said. Uh, actually, do you remember the, uh, the last section when they all agreed with Nick? Well, well, this evening I'm going to agree with it, Dan, because uh, I agree with him that the last thing you want as a mayor is a party boot who does what they're told. Now, anybody who knows me will know that I am nobody's poodle. I was MP, uh, and I was one of the most rebellious MPs that the Labour Party's had for a generation. Voted against them on Iraq, voted against them on freedom of information, voted against them on the 40-day detention, we defeated Blair on that one, voted against them on a whole range of human rights issues. I'm no poodle. I wasn't a poodle as, a, as an MP, and I've not been a poodle as a, as a mayor either. I've sought to provide leadership, but also sought to take people with me. And during the last four years, we've rebuilt every secondary school in the city. No other city has done that. Over the last four years, we have created 3,000 new jobs in the city. 1,000 quality apprenticeships. We've rebuilt homes across the city. A massive programme of repairs for the ones we own. Loads of opportunities taken to use creatively the land that the council's got. Yeah, I mean, they're dismissive, they're selling it for a pound. But actually what we did was to enable the housing associations to build badly needed, affordable, rented properties on there as a result of doing it. And that's about being creative and about taking risks. And I made that happen. Of course, it's not been four years without problems. The, the Children's Social Services was, oh, well, I can hardly think of polite words to use in front of an audience. But it, it was not the council's finest hour by any means. Last year, a review was undertaken of the way in which uh, some changes were made, the way the social workers worked, and a part of the way they worked. It wasn't only a part of it, it was an important part of it. What happens at the front door when people refer, referred to us fell apart for a few months. And children who should and deserved to get immediate referral to a social worker weren't getting it. It didn't mean the rest of social services fell apart. That important bit at the front door was delayed. Now we look back at it, and there's no evidence that any child actually was harmed during that period as a result of it. But that isn't to say that they were not put at risk. What I did as mayor, as soon as I became aware of it, as soon as we had that Ofsted report, was to move swiftly to make sure that those children were kept safe and that the disastrous situation that we've had for those few months could never happen again. I take responsibility for it. I've said sorry for it because it should never have happened. But as mayor, and this is so different from what might have happened when you had a council leader, as mayor, you had somebody there who was able to put things right, to do it quickly, and to make sure those children looked after properly in the future. But we've got to look to the future, of course. I haven't got very long in my introductory remarks to talk about that, but there's more jobs needed. There's more homes need repair. There's more accommodation for elderly people needed. And what we've done for the secondary schools we need to do for the younger children in the primary schools. There's a job that's only partly done. Thank you, Sir Peter.